today is um, World Photography Day. I am a photographer, and primarily, I love to make beautiful images. I love to make images of beauty. Um, but the more I advanced in my work and I started to show work, especially internationally, the initial work that was shown of my work was more documentary work. And that was work that showed the reality of my life. I um, started to make work, portrait work, from the very beginning of my career. And then I decided that I was going to use my gift to convey whatever message it was I was passionate about. Photographers like to say this, a picture is worth more than a thousand words. But unfortunately, in the world that we are in right now, people don't have time to listen to a thousand words. People are always in a hurry, and it's very, very hard to get people's attention. Another thing is, it's very hard to hold people's attention. In the past, if you showed people a shocking image of something really, really gruesome, you could get them talking about it for two weeks, but not anymore. We're all on social media. We're constantly seeing things by the minute that shock us. So how do we get our work into people's hearts? I decided that if I was going to make work that was going to have people's attention, I figured I would do it better with what I was good at, and that was creating beauty. So I des decided that I was going to use beauty as my main medium for creating portraits. So in my work that I've done, my personal work recently has been on orphanages, on people who are displaced, and also on strangers. Maybe because my greatest fear in life has been losing my mom or being caught up in a place that I don't know, I know no one, or, and being a stranger and being lost. But I find that when I go into these really dangerous spaces, as orphanages or IDP camps or places that are not so beautiful. I find a way to use my own work to find beauty in that environment. So usually what I do is I make portraits in those environments. I'll give you, for example, when I did my very first exhibition on my work with orphanages. Initially, I started making photos of the orphanages as with what I saw, the reality of the orphanages and the challenges that they had. But what I found was that when people saw these images, they were too real, so people turned away. They blocked it, they became numb. But then I started to make images that I know how to make, beautiful images. I remember that one day I was in an orphanage and a policewoman brought in a baby straight from the side of the road. And I asked the, the head of the orphanage if I could come back to make portraits of this baby. So what I did was I just plucked some flowers from their garden, and I made photos of a baby as if a billionaire woman had asked me to photograph their own baby. And then I continued to make images like this at different orphanages, and then I had an exhibition. Initially, when I invited people to come see the images, they were like, ah, I don't want to see, I don't want to see abandoned babies. But then when they came, they saw very simple images with babies with flowers or a baby with a teardrop. And then I had somebody walk up to one of the pictures and say, ah, that child looks like my Tolu. This is exactly what my child looked like when they were that age. And immediately I was able to make a connection. Same thing with when I went to the IDP camps. I had the option of making images that showed exactly what the challenges were. And do not get me wrong, I'm not saying that there's no place for this type of images that show us reality, but sometimes, we are so immersed in reality that we need an alternate perspective. So I just started to make beautiful images of people at the orphanages, and I started to tell their individual stories. For instance, I met a woman who told me I was in the bathroom. Boko Haram had been nowhere near town, and then my husband had just left for work, and then the gunshots started. That was the last time I saw him. And I made a portrait of her holding her phone. Apparently, she believes her husband may still be al alive, and she may call one day and call her number. Now, what is the good of all of this? Am I really able to get people to do good looking at beautiful images? Am I hiding them from the reality? Am I hiding them from the real trouble? I don't think so. I can give an example, or many examples. For instance, through those images I've taken of, of um, orphans, I've had people that I know adopt babies. I've had people pay attention 
Remember when I told the story of the bread seller and I shot her beautifully? People started a conversation and started talking about her. And they began to relate better to people in sim similar situations. Also, I remember when I had um, an opportunity to meet Beyonce, and I remember a small gathering was made for her where she met some of the orphans. She didn't really get to spend time and find out what their challenges were. But I remember one of my images was given to her, and she was to take it away as a gift. And I know that about three months after that, next time she was invited to a gala, she auctioned the photo that was given her, and sold it, it was sold for a lot of money, and she sent the money back to the children. Beauty does have a place. The world is very, very, very dark, and we must not be afraid to have a different perspective. Um, my work has always been about connecting with people, you know, and the reason why I find this important is photography is not just a way for me to um, convey my own personal opinions. It's my own way to form them as well. It's how I connect with the world and how I get to meet people and understand them. So I use it as my own way to explore and discover other people and get to know them better. And then it puts me in a place of power where I can now have a perspective and a point of view and then convey whatever it is I've found to other people. I remember I had made um, images of Emmanuel, a total stranger that I'd met in Yaba as well. And I was able to connect with his story. Emmanuel used to live in um, a remand home. And by the beautiful portraits I made of Emmanuel, I was able to talk about you know, how it is that most children who grow up in orphanages in Nigeria have to leave once they turn a certain age, and there's nowhere for them to go. Many of them are asked to go back home, and they have no home to go back to. And then they are shipped off to remand homes, where they are forced to live with people who, in, in, in a correctional facility, when they don't necessarily have to be there. So here it is. What is my point? Whatever it is that you do, and whatever it is that you know how to do well, will always, always be your best tool in conveying the things that you really care about. Thank you very much.